Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about getting data from sensors and then moving it off of the ESP32 for visualization. So the backstory on this is that I was playing with uh, an I2C device, an MPU6050 accelerometer, and using that accelerometer I was reading the uh, X, Y and the Z axis from it, and it was all working well, and I was logging it to my, <coughs> excuse me, I was logging it to my serial console of the ESP32, and it was all great. And then I realized I wanted to chart it. I wanted to draw a graph of how the X, Y, and the Z axis were changing as I tilted the device. And that's where I paused. I went, how am I going to do that? And I realized pretty quickly that I wanted the data that was coming from the ESP32 sensor readings, I wanted that to be copied into a PC where I could then chart the data. Okay, so the question was, how do I get the sensor red data off of the ESP32 and into my PC? Well, there's, there's a number of ways, of course. Um, I could uh, save it in my ESP32 and then read it through serial, or I could just send it to the serial uh, console and somehow scrape it off of the serial console. But uh, both of those missed the key point that the ESP32 is a excellent, excellent networking device. So what I did was I created a TCP IP listener, that's very straightforward, that runs in the ESP32. And I then, from my PC, connect to the ESP32 through the, through the TCP listener. And then, when the sensor data comes in from the MPU6050, I simply throw it down the socket and let the receiver, the PC, worry about it. And this all worked. This all worked great. So let me take you through some of the notions. First of all, you're going to see me move over to programming in C++ as opposed to C. Um, uh, there's no great reason for that. Uh, I'm personally studying C++ and I uh, think it's uh, very, very attractive for ESP32 programming and still has got all the power I need. So you'll see me program a little bit in C++. So let's start at the beginning. So this is the task that gets started. It creates a Wi-Fi object. That's an ESP32 Wi-Fi object. I set up a handler uh, to handle the events coming in from Wi-Fi and uh, then I connect to my local SSID, my local Wi-Fi access point. In my handler for events, I say that when I get an uh, an IP address, meaning when I am network connected, my ESP32 will then start another task called the process accelerometer or process accelerometer task. And the process accelerometer task is where all the good things happen. So in here, I start a socket server. And what this does is this listens on a particular TCP IP port and it listens for incoming network connections. And it does that in the background, so I don't need to do anything further here. Then I've got this while loop and this loop loops forever. We just go around this loop forever and ever. I then have a class which reads the accelerometer and the gyroscopic data off of my MPU6050. I echo it to the screen and then what I do is I write a record down the socket server to the connected client or the connected partner, which is a formatted record which contains the accelerometer X, Y, Z, gyroscopic X, gyroscopic Y and gyroscopic Z. So lots of words. If you're interested in more detail, pause and look at the code. Uh, Notice how <coughs> using C++ with some encapsulating classes can make the code a lot read more readable, in my opinion. So, for example, if I want to read from an MPU6050, I create an MPU6050 class, call the functions to read data from it, and then retrieve the X, Y, and Z parameters, completely encapsulating the full access to the uh, uh, to the uh, MPU6050. Same with socket serving and, and various other things. So let's now go to our console. Let me start. Um, 
let me start. Uh, what's the word I want to use here? <laughs> Mine's gone blank. Let me start the ESP32 application. And now we're seeing the accelerometer and the gyroscopic data. So these are the raw values from the device. And this is the formatted message that I'm sending. If I start tilting my ESP32, we can see the accelerometer angles change. So that's all great. Now let's turn our attention over to the PC. On the PC, there's a command called NC, Network Connect, or Netcat rather, Netcat. Now if I run Netcat against my ESP32 IP address, against the port that the socket server is listening on, it immediately starts echoing the data received over the socket out to the console. And as the data arrives, uh, we get to see the data appear on the screen. And obviously, as in the way of all good demos, it's it's gone and paused on me. I don't know why it's paused. I think I'm having some network communication issues here. I think my Wi-Fi access point is too far away. There we go. It's too far away from uh, my device. So there we go. We're getting data streaming coming out from the ESP32 arriving at the standard output of my device. If I connect again, we see the data once more. Now, what I can do is I can redirect that data into a file, imaginatively called O. And if I redirect it into the file, what's happening is all this data which is arriving now is being redirected into this file called O. So O is a continually growing file. The file could be called whatever I like, but I called it O. And the file is continually growing. Now, let's turn our attention to one more thing, which is the which is the open source tool called KST. Now, I have no idea what KST stands for, but what it does, it's a freely downloadable tool for Windows and Linux, and it takes data and visualizes it in chart and graph format, including streaming live data. So the data that I'm writing into the file, uh, that data can now be visualized in charts. So here, for example, is the KST real-time chart, which is taking the output of my data, coming in from the ESP32, being appended from a file, and uh, KST has been configured to read from that file. Now, if I start tilting my ESP32 board, what we find is that the uh, data changes its, its orientation. And we can see quite, quite clearly how the X, Y, and Z uh, values are changing as a function of how I tilt my board. And uh, that becomes real useful, real interesting to notice. So if we wanted to perform some kind of accelerometer or vibration, for example, if I just hold the device in my hand here, you can see that I appear to have the shakes. This is me holding, for example, the ESP32 in my hand. You can see as my hand shakes just that tiniest little bit, uh, we get uh, measurements of that. So that, there's, there's a possible use for this thing, uh, detecting uh, tremors in people, for example. Um, I tilt it some more, we get different there. So th this is very cool. This allows us to look at the uh, uh, vibrations uh, in, in, uh, in a device. And for example, if uh, one lived in an earthquake zone, in principle, this could record uh, seism seismographic information. For example, if I tap my table, bang, tap my table again, bang, you can immediately see and that was a good five feet across the table. You can see there the effect of a smack on my table as it changes the acceleration data. So what we've shown in this tutorial has been a bit of a mishmash, but the high level is that we have the capability in C++ to do all kinds of nice, cool, interesting ESP32 things. But uh, the core thing here was the notion that if we set up a socket server in our ESP32 app, we can network connect to the ESP32 from, say, a Linux machine or a Windows machine. And then any application we've got running in the ESP32, which reads data from sensors, can send that data down the socket. And then off-the-shelf applications like Network Connect can connect to the ESP32, get the data, and redirect that into a file. And then simply bolting on tools like the open source KST, 
we can then start visualizing that without a cloud system in sight. Very easy to use, very easy to customize, and these charts are very configurable. I hope you found something useful in this video, and I look forward to making more in the future. Thanks now, and bye-bye.